Now, I've been getting a lot of people telling me about to cover this person for years, actually, for years. I didn't really uh, cover this individual until now, however. So I'm finally going to cover this individual now. But a lot of people are wondering if Emmanuel Macron is the Antichrist. So because I've received a lot of comments on that, and more recently my church members start to get into that as well, so because of that, I decided to cover him today. We're going to look at a few passages concerning Emmanuel Macron. Now, you already can tell that there's a lot of things that we can make him a very good candidate for the Antichrist. Now, here's the thing. Your pastor is not saying that he is the Antichrist. I want to make that very clear. Your pastor, what he is, is that because he is a person that believes in open-mindedness and critical thinking, that way you can make intelligent decisions. So I think that it's not an intelligent uh, decision where you're being biased and not open-minded. So that's why your pastor, he looks at all the possibilities over here and look at it from a logical perspective. So he is open to the fact that Macron could be the Antichrist, but he is not too sure. But we're going to look at some strong, we're going to look at some strong pointers here where he can fit the bill of the Antichrist. Now, the first thing is the giveaway is concerning his name. So Emmanuel, meaning God with us. And then if you look at the book of Daniel chapter 11, the Antichrist mentions over here that he's going to make himself as God to the people. So that's one thing that you notice at Daniel 11. The second thing is if you just simply, now you can go to a technical translation, but actually, I'm going to hover over the technical facts and just give you a very simple, loose translation. Macron can actually go, uh, it can shrink down to Mark, actually. It can be simplified to the translation as Mark. Just like the Antichrist who has the mark of the beast at Revelation chapter 13. That's pointer one. Pointer two is his wife, actually. If you look at his wife, it is very, very strange. She is over 20 years his senior. So I don't know if a lot of you knew that one. So what kind of a, so you're probably wondering, why would he marry her? So if you look at the story, the story goes where it is very, very shady stuff. Where he was a student at this school and then had a love affair with his teacher. And that was his later going to be his wife. And he was a teenager that time. Totally inappropriate. Totally inappropriate. And she was already married that time to a banker. Now what happened was is that the parents were obviously furious concerning about what Emmanuel did. So then he was distanced from her. And the romantic story goes where he uh, tells her, I'll be back for you. So then he accomplished uh, his master's in philosophy, if I remember correctly. And then when he returned, then he... Uh, he was able to get her together where she was able to separate from her husband and then they got married. Now, this kind, uh, this kind of thinking shows his totally libertarian sort of point of view. You see that? This is totally unconventional. So this is the idea where it's so-called liberty, see? Yeah where it's totally unconventional, non-traditional, which is why he was very popular with the younger generation's vote. So then all you have to do is give it time where the younger generation can pretty much take over the world and the voting system. And then they can vote this guy in as their leader if he turns out to be the Antichrist. But it's not just him, it's also her. If you study her work, she gets to a point where she's popularizing the feminist movement, and also a lot, of sexual, a lot of sexual pointers and sexual indications. So if you look at some of the stuff that she published, that she worked with, it is totally unconventional. So because they were born, see, in psychology, they teach this, is that you cannot be able to teach or lead somebody to a, to a convincing point of view unless you don't have an inner value yourself. So see, you couldn't, basically this, you can't take a philosophy or a perspective point of view for your practice unless you have a belief, a bias, a value first. So because they're already ingrained with that, 
through, through their romantic relationship, see something fleshly, that's why they can promote this philosophy. That's important to understand, and that is, psych that is a psychological fact, actually. That is a psychological fact within psychologists when they do their practice. Another thing was, correct me if I'm wrong, but he was born at December 21st. Uh -huh. December 21st. Now, if you study about Christmas, where December 25th is at, you already know that this is rooted with paganism and Romanism and Babylonian stuff. Now, December 21st, you'll find out that it is a part or a continuation within this Roman paganism. See, so he's already connected with something Roman. And the Antichrist, he is mentioned by Bible-believing preachers where he is going to have to be Roman. He is going to be Roman or Catholic in some way. Now, these are several pointers that you can find out with Emmanuel Macron, which is easy to find, which is easy to find in research. Now, over here, what I'm going to do is quote out sources over here to point out how he can be a strong candidate of the Antichrist. And before I go through these sources, I just want to mention this, is that uh, I do get onliners who do get upset when I start to take out mainstream news as my sources, and they say, but that's all fake news, that's all fake news. So I just want to say this. One, you got to understand this, onliners, is that the whole world don't think like you do. The whole world, they're only going to believe if I put up standard sources and graduate school or university uh, level sources, or if they hear from experts and doctorates. So because of that, I want, if, you, if I'm going to convince the whole world about something biblical and prophetic, this pastor, what he's going to do is that he's going to play ball with this world and show them, see, even in your sources, Amen. the people that you trust, they even say this. So you have to understand that fact. Another thing is this, is that you got to realize, onliners, is that even you would look up to mainstream news and believe something what they say. Now, you might say, no, I do not. No, let me try to explain here that you don't understand in your mindset. Uh, a great example is we heard from the news where the governor of California extended the date of the shelter at place. Now, if, uh, what are you going to do as an onliner? Are you going to naturally think as fake news or you're going to naturally believe that and you're going to get upset about the extension they put at shelter at place? It's natural to believe it, right? It's also natural when you read the mainstream news about sports and the weather, who won the ball game, etc., that you're going to believe all that. Or some catastrophe happened, you know, within our world. This is where you come up with fake news. How you find out it's fake news is if you read it and find something that is contradictory to the facts that you find is bias. See, that's where then you realize it's fake news. So mainstream news, are they biased? Are they fake news? Yeah, but I can't, but I just don't say on everything, obviously. How I can find out it's biased and fake news is if I find out which areas they talk about that's contradictory to fact. And then because of that contradictory fact, I can post that up and show over there, hey, see that? That's fake news over here. That's good. So you gotta understand that fact. Okay. Now let's cover some interesting things concerning about Macron. The first thing is, is that if you look up uh, The Economist, if you look up The Economist in their front page, I believe at the year 2017, the title in the very front page is Macron walking on the water like he's Jesus, like he's Christ, and, it's, and the title is Europe's Savior. Europe's Savior. Interesting fact one. Another interesting fact, too, the documentation for this one, the title is French Papers Compare President Macron to Roman God Jupiter. Yeah. So they're comparing Macron, that his rulership is too much power, they're, they're complaining. And I'm talking about French newspapers in France, in France, where they're examining and investigating their leader, they're saying that he's got too much power over here. It's like Jupiter, which is who? The chief of the god, Zeus. 
Now remember, if you look up in Daniel 11, the Antichrist, what, is going to reject all other gods and proclaim himself to be God. How about that? So this is actually in the YouTube channel. It's called France 24 English. France 24 English in English language. So this is at the French source, and this is also standard mainline news as well, I want to say, before some critics get upset at me that you're reading from some kind of conspiracy blog. No, your pastor over here, to make it convincing to the world, he always pulls up standard sources. And if I pull up an amateur source, your pastor will give a disclaimer, this is an amateur source. He will always do that. But then he'll use logical reasoning, argument, and encourage people to do independent research and critical thinking to see if it's true or false. It's that simple. So that's another pointer concerning Emmanuel Macron. Now here's another one. The title of this article is What Emmanuel Macron's Hometown Says About Him. And that's by The Economist. Right. What does his hometown say about it? So he was shaped by Amiens, the place he outgrew. So if you want to investigate him, you want to go to Amiens. And you'll probably find a lot of things about him and maybe even some new rumors or theories if you want to put out out there. Interesting stuff. The quote is, the man who could soon be the next and youngest ever president of France. So that's another thing. So that will explain a lot of the preachers who talk about the Antichrist is going to be a handsome, good-looking person. Or if the Antichrist is going to imitate Jesus Christ at a young age, right? So he is going to be youthful. Interestingly, concerning about his wife, where is 20 years his senior, if you look at the History, and I'm talking about history, if you look at a historical perspective of how Roman powers tried to advance their system, Semiramis, who was the mother of Tammuz, who's supposed to be the gods that the people worship as their leader, as Nimrod reincarnated, he had to have this kind of senior female where this guy can come out as savior, Tammuz, and worshiped as God. Think about Muhammad. When he started his religion of Islam, it is a matter of fact, and this is historically, this is historically proven, no brainer, where his first wife, where she had Roman Catholic ties. As a matter of fact, this woman is still called today uh, with the title, something where it's talking about mother of Muslims or mother of Islam, somewhere at that phrase. She's still given that title. And she had... And she was connected, she was religiously tied to the Catholic Church. She was Catholic. But that helped with what? The birth of Islam and where the Vatican can be able to infiltrate and have powers and ties with Muslims during that time. And then obviously at the Crusades, it didn't really work out to the Catholic Church bidding. Why? Because everybody wants power. That's what your pastor keeps explaining to you, is that with these elites when you study the globalists the reason why you'll see agreement and contradiction is because it's very simple hunger for power it's all a hunger for power now i'm going to read some other things concerning i'm going to read some other things here it was as a pupil he was a pupil at a where private jesuit school in amiens so he's already tied to catholicism there is absolutely no doubt about it that we can see Catholic ties. Jesuit. Now remember, if you look at the top of the pyramid concerning about the elites and globalists, you'll see Jesuits there. And if you look at the lower tire, the lower tire systems in the pyramid, you'll see Jesuits there. You'll see Jesuits in, tied to Christian organizations today. They're everywhere. They're tied to universities too. Everywhere. Mr. Macron met the drama teacher, Brigitte Ozier, fully 24 years his senior, who later became his wife. 
The bond alarmed his parents, both provincial doctors, who sent him to finish his schooling in Paris instead. No, no kidding. The bookish student was at first in awe at the brilliance of the capital's brightest, but he quickly, now look at this, he quickly learned the codes of the French elite, winning a place at the École Nationale d'Administration, whose alumni include three of the five past presidents, and with it, access access to the power brokers in Paris. So this guy definitely has ties to elites and power brokers. But how specifically with power brokers? Let me keep reading over here. Mr. Macron defied convention with his marriage. See, it shows that libertarian point of view, where it appeals more toward the libertarian point of view, friend, where you get more rebellious toward traditional values is where you dig deeper into what? Sin. That's why it's very possible the Antichrist can be very corrupted. Why? When you push this left-wing point of view more toward a libertarian standard, and you just keep pushing, pushing, pushing. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that all libertarians are left-wing. Obviously, there are people who do not like the Democratic Party, and they would like to call themselves where they're not connected or tied to the government. So I don't want people who are libertarians in that sort of sense to misunderstand me, okay? But let's keep reading over here. He later sought financial independence by working as an investment banker at Rothschild. Okay, so we know that one of the top leaders in the pyramids of the elite and globalist system is Rothschild. Now, what am I reading to you so far? I'm not reading from a conspiracy blog, okay? Investment banker as well. Now, there's one key thing that I want you to see his power which can explain how the Antichrist is going to usher his new world order through this virus situation. It's economy. Due to health. Okay? This is the key route that you want to find how you can take over the world, so to speak, if you want to be the Antichrist, which <laughs> nobody wants to be, obviously. <laughs> As economy minister under the socialist president, Francois Hollande, he was an outspoken critic of the 35-hour working week. So notice this guy is total rebellious of even a socialist platform. Why? Because the Antichrist at Daniel 11, when you read it, he's going to be his own man. So he's the, the extreme of the extreme. Just a year ago, Mr. Macron flouted rules by launching his own political movement, En Marche. See, he has his own movement. Read Daniel 11. What does he want to do? The Antichrist. His own movement. As a rival, he's a rival to both what? The socialist party he once belonged to and the president he served. How about that? You talk about Antichrist power, Antichrist mode, going marching on, marching on. But that matches with Revelation 6, right? The first horseman, the Antichrist, he marches on, just like his movement. Why? Goes forth conquering and to conquer, the Bible says. Matches with the horseman. Another intriguing article, and this is by The Telegraph, which is known as a very prestigious newspaper. The title of the article, this is by Henry Samuel, 1st of February, 2018. The title of the article Emmanuel Macron accused of having state radio chief sacked to end rumor they had an affair. Whoa. The Antichrist, he is known, as some Bible believers mention, if you look at Daniel 11, no desire of women, homosexual. There were accusations roaming concerning that one. President Emmanuel Macron is facing claims he had the head of France state group sacked because he was irked at rumors that they had an affair. Who's the guy's name? Mathieu Gallet, 41, was this week fired as chairman of Radio France by the Higher Audiovisual Council, the French Broadcasting Authority. How about that? 
Now what happened is obviously because Macron has so much power, and obviously since this is a prestigious newspaper, that they, they're going to crush out the rumor, so then they explain the rumor as something false and that was threatening Macron's power. But actually what's very interesting to think about is that when, Mac, when this rumor came out, it actually got Macron to power where he won the vote wow. because of that homosexual rumor spreading out. If that's not the sole one, it is one of the pivotal things that helped him with his voting process to win. I'm going to read another article over here. This is by World News. This is by World News. Uh, Economic Times, that's the title of the news source, Economic Times. By Economic Times, the title of the article is UN launches global push to accelerate production of virus vaccine. So when they do this, obviously UN is pushing this and a lot of people are concerned where this is like a precursor and another closer step toward the mark of the beast. The article reads over here, the UN on Friday joined forces with world leaders and the private sector on an initiative to speed up development of COVID-19 vaccines and treatments and ensure equal access for all. Now remember the chairman of the UN, Gebreyesus, this person, he had communist ties. Your pastor mentioned about that. This is what he says. This is a landmark collaboration to accelerate the development, production, and equitable distribution of vaccines, et cetera, et cetera, therapeutics for COVID-19. What does he continue over here? As we continue reading and as I continue quoting, the event, this event where they got together to push this, was co-hosted by French President Emmanuel Macron, European Commission Chief Ursula von der Leyen and Melinda and Melinda Gates of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. <laughs> dun dun dun. That's good. Wow. Hey, let me keep reading here. It gets it gets more shocking. It gets more shocking. Listen to this. This can really push where the Antichrist has an excuse for the mark of the beast. It's for safety reasons. It's because it's dangerous. That's why take this mark of the beast. Here, listen, Guterres said, not a vaccine or treatments for one country or one region or one half of the world, but a vaccine and treatment that are affordable, safe, effective, easily administered and universally, universally available for everyone everywhere none of us is safe until all of us are safe i'm not done we got some more i got some more sources here so he's tied to gates and the push for vaccines Let me keep reading. This is by Politico, and the title of the article is How Emmanuel Macron Became the New Leader of the Free World. Did you hear that title? Emmanuel Macron Became the New Leader leader of the Free World. We all want to be free, so let's have this person be our leader. But remember, I mentioned to you from the French video, which I didn't have time to play, but there were French newspapers complaining about he has too much power, so they were very concerned about it. Your pastor mentioned the sword, where he's like ruling like Jupiter, chief of the god Zeus. Speaking last week to the European Parliament, Macron warned, now if you thought the previous statement was chilling about none of us are safe until we all have this, where they're pushing it like it's force, This is scary. This is chilling, too. Macron warned of a European civil war and urged the European Union to defend liberal democracy against a surging tide of illiberal nationalism. 
Faced with the authoritarianism that surrounds us everywhere, the answer is not authoritarian democracy, but the authority of democracy. Notice that from this statement, Macron, the reason why he's pushing like a new leader of a free world, how you can achieve that is what? Revelation 6 and 1 Thessalonians 5. When I declare peace and safety for, so that we can all live in a peaceable world, it is by conquering and to conquer. The title of the article, I, read it, uh, I gave it to you, written by Will Marshall, April 22nd. 2018. So notice that's his goal. That's his point over here. And here's by CNN. Now look what CNN, <laughs> the news source that a lot of people hate, look what even they said. The title of the article is, is Emmanuel Macron wins presidency as France rejects far right by James Masters and Kara Fox, May 8th, 2017. Macron, so they're talking about how he won the vote. Macron has won 66.06% of the vote. It's just getting worse and worse for this person over here. <laughs> Very close to 666, isn't it? Coincidence? Now, the big question, which is running in every Bible believer's mind, before we can make a rush conclusion, is this. We always look at if the person qualifies as Antichrist, does he have Jewish root? Does he have a Jewish root? That's the key. Jewish or Syrian root. Now, this is what your pastor discovered. Your pastor, he could not find where he's bloodline or ethnically tied to Jews or Syrians, where we need that tie where he can bring that peace agreement, right, for Jews and Muslims. But I found something interesting here. This is by the Jerusalem Post. So this is Israel itself, okay, Israel's source. The title of the article is Emmanuel Macron's Israel Ties. That's the title of the article. So he's tied to Jews here. Let's keep reading. Let me jump to the next source. This is what one of the Israeli officials said. If Macron is elected, France will embark on an innovation economy and Israel will be at the center of its economic cooperation. What does the Antichrist need? He needs Israel as the key headquarters. Yeah. And he's going to eventually take it over, according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 11. But let me keep reading. Margolet said, Macron asked me how to build a startup nation. He wanted advice on government policies that encourage innovation. I asked him to cooperate with Israel on, look at these subjects. What, he, what this person wants Macron to get involved with, which is pretty similar with what the Antichrist has to be involved with if he's going to rule over the world. Cybersecurity, agriculture and food, communications, and the Internet. Gold mine after gold mine. You see that the Antichrist will take over those points. Revelation 11 with technology. Uh, Revelation 13 where he spreads that mark based on ec economy as well as agriculture and food. Revelation chapter 6, the black horsemen, where do not touch the oil and wine because this is for what? Our special people or an elite people, so to speak. All right, let me get going. Otherwise, we'll never get over here. According to Margaret, Macron inquired about advancing joint Israeli-Palestinian economic projects in Bethlehem as a catalyst for building relations. Asked for Macron's view on diplomatic issues, Margaret said he wants, quote unquote, wants the two-state solution to be win-win. 
for Israel. Yesh Atid leader Yar Lapid, meanwhile, posted a statement on Facebook calling Macron, he called Macron, quote unquote, my friend. What did Jesus Christ call wow. Ju what did Jesus Christ what did Jesus yeah. Christ call Judas Iscariot yeah. who will be the antichrist friend yeah. what did the book of Zechariah prophesied about Judas Iscariot and even the antichrist later on friend friend yeah. and calling upon voters to ensure his victory over Le Pen this is wow look at this they're getting Jews to side with him quote although we don't uh, this is what Lapid wrote. Although we don't get involved in elections in other countries, this time I will make an exception, Lapid wrote. Anyone who has the right to vote in Israel or in France needs to support Macron against Marine Le Pen in the second round. And obviously we can see that Macron, he took over. Here's another one. The Wall Street Journal reported last week that Lapid saw Macron, saw Macron as a model for himself and Yesh Atid. So look at these. These Jewish officials, they're looking at Macron as one of them, as a good model for the Jewish people. So he may not be Jewish by blood, but we can see it's very close. It's like a close family relationship with the Jews we can see over here. They're treating him like that, as someone that we look up to and follow, the Jews say. But what did Daniel 11 say? He's not going to regard the God of his fathers. He's going to reject that to make up himself as a God. In staking out the political center, Mr. Lapid has repeatedly compared himself to a fellow former finance minister, Emmanuel Macron. Can you see that? The Israeli politician describes his candidacy as part of a new moderate backlash against the populist wave. Why? Because the mindset, the goal is we want this free world, this libertarian where we're not bound by government. But actually, this is giving more government power, which is why the French newspapers were saying we're just giving this guy too much power. It's clouded with freedom and peace. That's the Antichrist job clouding it, hiding it, when it's actually taking over the world in power. My, my, my. That's what you're going to hear about Macron. 